Hello, Ness Tilson here, and in this video, I'd like to show how to use ProjiCAD to enhance a staircase um, built with Stair Designer. Um, here on the screen, we have a staircase uh, built with Stair Designer. In my last video, I showed how to add a turned posts to this stair. Um, in this video, I'd like to show you how to add a um, goosenecked handrail so that we can complete the 3D model. Now, um, just to go over quickly um, the uh, how we export the model. The, this model is made in Stair Designer, and to export the model into ProjiCAD, we just use the file export stair, and we use the 2D export function and the 3D export function to export a 2D drawing and a 3D model of the staircase. Let's go over to ProjiCAD now to see what this gives. Here we have ProjiCAD and this is the model, the 3D model as it comes out of Stair Designer, this is the model I've enhanced, as it comes out of Stair Designer we get this model here, we can have a look at it in a shaded view. This is the Stair Designer model as it straight, comes straight out of Stair Designer. Um, in my last video I enhanced this model by adding textures, lights, and uh, turn new posts. And in this video, what we would like to do is, I'd like to. We can see that the uh, the handrail comes out of Stair Designer. If we look closely at the handrail, the handrail stays a squared section rail, and it's it's uh, actually straight. And the assemble to the new post is actually too low. If we put a turn new post here, so what I'm going to try and show you how to do is how we're going to add construct and redesign the junction here so that we can add a gooseneck section to this uh, handrail and get an assembly in the square portion of the new post. So to do this the design aspect will be I'll be using the 2D drawing from Stair Designer. Let's go to the 2D drawing made in Stair Designer. And now here we are in the 2D drawing given by Stair Designer. The first thing we have to do is we have to draw in the falling line of the handrails that we want to um, design in 3D. So we're going to design two rails, a lower rail and the upper rail, and here we have the elevation of the two in Stair Designer 2D drawing. But what we want to do is we want to modify the rails so that they are molded and the bottom rail is has a gooseneck we'll insert a curved gooseneck section here so that we can uh, have a an assembly point which will be higher than the straight rail and so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to draw in on a special layer we create a layer in ProjiCAD for the handrail so we're going to go let's go here and we're going to add uh, I'm going to call it 3D rail Let's give it a, a specific color so we can see it's different from the rest of the drawing. 3D rail. And we're going to draw the falling line of both handrails. Now the falling line of the lower rail, we're going to, the well, the falling line of the upper rail. Should we start with the upper rail? That's the easiest. We just draw a line and we draw a line simply over, overlay the falling line onto the elevation of the existing rail. On the lower rail, it's a bit more complicated. We're going to want to, well, we want to adjust the lower rail with inserting a gooseneck, and the gooseneck we want it to arrive about the same height as the upper rail here. So we're going to draw it in, and we're going to take the intersection of the upper rail with a new post, drag out the falling line to around about here, and then take a vertical descent and we're going to give it 10 centimeters length because we know the rail is 8 centimeters wide and we want the falling section here to be a little bit more than our 8 centimeters. Now we're going to draw in another line which represents the falling line of the lower portion of the handrail and we're going to fill it between, well, let's give it a, say a 50 centimeter fillet between this section of the handrail which is rising, and this falling section of the gooseneck. Now this gives us the falling line of the gooseneck and the falling line 
of the upper rail. To avoid confusion in the drawing, let's cut straight away this line here which goes through the newel post. Let's just trim it with a trim command at the newel post. Now we have the two falling lines in place. Now let's just isolate the layer of the falling lines so that we can work with more clearly on the drawing. We have the, here we have the lower rail, the upper surface of the lower rail, and the higher, the uh, second hand rail, the higher rail. Now, uh, the lower rail is actually made of segments. Let's create a single polyline entity with the modify polyline command here and join all the segments together to make one single polyline. Now when I click on this entity, it is a single entity, single polyline entity. Right, now let us um, draw the section of the handrail that we want um, profiled. So to do that, let's go on to a side view and then go back to isometric view. And here we have the UCS. We're going to put the UCS on the end of a, one of the handrail sections, one of the handrail lines. And let's draw a rectangle that gives us the outer section of the rail from, let's give the section of the rail 8 centimeters by 5 centimeters, and let's put it like this. And we see we're in an isometric view, we have a rectangle. Well, we can start designing the section that we want to give to the handrail. Now let's take it a simple section for this example, but the section can be of any any shape you want, and the it's just you just draw in arcs or whatever whatever shape you want. Here we're going to take a simple section. Let's say we're going to take a section. We're going to round the top. We're going to round the top with a two centimeter fillet here. Let's say we're going to give, put a groove on the side to give a bit of bit of a little circular groove on each side. We can say that this groove is on each side, so we're going to mirror the circle on the other side. And let's trim let's trim everything up so that it looks like the handrail section. Okay, let's use a hand, let's use this section for the handrail. We can see this. Okay, we're going to. We, this looks. This doesn't look too bad. Let's, let's say this section is okay for the handrail. Okay. Now, the first um, thing we're going to do is we're going to take this section, which is now uh, separate entities of lines and circles, and we're going to create a, a region or a surface. This surface, we are now going to. X, we're going to copy this surface. This surface gives the section of the rail. We're going to copy it so that we have a surface section. We're going to copy it by the midpoint of the top here. And let's copy it down to the lower rail. Let's put it on the end of the lower falling line of the lower rail. Uh, this one, um, we're going to do it, we're going to move this bit, this one itself, and we're also going to take it by the midsection, and we're going to put it on the end point of the upper rail, the upper falling line. Right, let's make the handrail for the upper section of the stair. We're going, well, here we have the section that we want, the molded section. Let's call, let's make an extrusion, taking the extrude command, an extrusion of this surface that we've just made. And let's give it, say, 2 meters 50 length. And here we have a 2 meters 50. Wow, it's a bit too long. Let's cut it down a bit. I think I made it too long here. Let's make it... I think I made it 25 meters and not 2 meters 50. Let's make it 2 meters 50. So we have it a bit more manageable. Okay. So I've given it with an extrude command. I've extruded it out to give the give a molded handrail two meters fifty long. Now, let's just turn it. We use the rotate command. Let's uh, go back to world system coordinates and turn this. 
and rotate it around the base point and to the end here. Now this rail, this hand rail, if we have a look closer and we give it a little shade, this rail is now molded and inclined along the plane where the handrail is found. Now what we're going to do is take it here and let's now add uh, display the new posts and we were going to use the cut command here we have a knife a cut command slice I think it's called slice command we're going to take the handrail and we're going to slice it along the XZ plane and we're going to slice it at the position of the newel face here and we'll keep this side and now we can see that the handrail is sliced or cut just as if we were using a circular <laughs> saw to cut it in fact along the position of the face of the newel post let's do the same with the other one here we're just going to say cut handrail cut it along the YZ point here and let's keep this side and here we have the handrail again cut at the position of the newel post. For the lower handrail we're going to use the falling line itself to generate the form. So we're going to use the extrude command extruding the surface that we drew which is the handrail section along the path that is the actual falling line of the handrail. And it doesn't seem to want to extrude it here, probably because we're not positioned perfectly onto the end of the rail. Let's just push it, put it onto the perfect, onto the end of the rail. Here we are. Now let's do our extrude command. Extrude this position along this path. And here we have the lower rail with the gooseneck which has automatically been drawn as shaded in we have to cut the gooseneck of our one lower rail at the position of the newel post so we use our cut command here cut the handrail here at the position of the newel post and keeping only one side this side here and now the handrail is positioned at the newel post so here we have our two rails two rounds. Uh, they're both molded which is uh, pretty neat and we're going to put them into our 3D drawing. The video I made, uh, the stair I made in the last drawing. We have the turn newel posts. If we do a little shade with textures and the spindles in brass. I put the spindles in brass. Let's uh, add the. This will display the handrail that's been made by Stair Designer, which is here, which is a square rail. There's no mouldings and there's no gooseneck. Have a look here. So it doesn't arrive at the right assembly point in the new post. Okay, let's add the lower gooseneck rail to the staircase. Well, I'll go back into my 2D drawing and I will do an edit. Copy with base point and I will now copy using this base point, I will copy the lower rail with the gooseneck. We go into the 3D drawing and now we do paste, paste and I take the rail and I will click it, the base point onto the stair designer rail to position it. And now we have this. Let's um, we will now turn the 3D rail which we built in the 2D drawing 
to position itself along the 3D rail that was drawn by Stair Designer. We use the AutoCAD or the ProjeCAD Align command, clicking the rail that we want to align, and we define the points of position of positioning. We'll take this point and we'll leave it here. We'll take this point and we'll move it to the other side of the rail. And we will take this point here and we will align it to the lower extremity of the rail drawn by stair designer. Now here we have um, if we shade it we have the rail given by stair designer and the rail we've just made with its gooseneck. We're going to add, add the, the other, other rail, rail. Now. Let's, that is uh, the straighter section. We go back into the 2D drawing and let's copy, edit, copy with base point, taking the base point, the bottom angle here, this one, the upper rail. We go back into our 3D drawing, let's turn it the other way so we get a better view and we will now insert paste paste the rail here and we will align this rail in the same way as we did with the 3D and rail and this is what the stair looks like once we've inserted the upper rail which we've inserted in exactly the same way we inserted the lower rail if we give it a quick render we can see with the textures that um, it gives it a nice nice clean finish quick render uh, let's twist the drawing around and give a perspective view perspective view operation auto perspective which we can zoom a bit and let's now give it a full render just to see what it looks like And here we have the the new posts, the turn new posts, with the handrail, and the handrails are moulded with a gooseneck, with materials and shadows added. Wow! I hope this has been interesting for you, and um, I hope that uh, you'll now know how to put in some moulded rails onto your stair designer stairs and give some nice presentations with.